guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you a recent readings video. I'm quite proud of myself because in the last few weeks I've read two books that have been on my TBR since 2014, so I'm really excited that I'm making a little bit of progress on getting some of those older books off my TBR. The first one of those books that I read was Deconstructing Penguins, Kids, Parents, and the Bond of Reading by Lawrence and Nancy Goldstone. Lawrence and Nancy Goldstone are authors, but they also lead a parent-child book club at their local public library. So this is sort of a part of part how-to guide, part memoir about their experiences with that. They read a variety of children's classics and they talk about important things in those books. And in this book, they go through like setting and character and figuring out who the protagonist is and um, figuring out the author's intentions behind the work, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very interesting book. It's a very short read. I read this in about 24 hours and I actually learned a lot of good stuff. I was quite surprised because I hadn't read like most of the books in here, which is really interesting. Um, I think that's because when I was a kid, I read at a very advanced level and I started reading like adult books when I was like 12, you know? So I, I sort of missed out on the whole children's literature besides like Harry Potter and um, uh, the Little House books and things like that. Sorry, my kitty is being crazy over here. So anyway, but yeah, so this was a good book. I had seen this on the Modern Mrs. Darcy blog a long time ago. I think I've mentioned before, but before I started BookTube, the Modern Mrs. Darcy blog was like my number one place to um, get book recommendations. I will say I found the time, the um, subtitle of this book kind of misleading. It's it's not really talking about the bond of reading per se. I mean, yes, the people in their book club, you know, I'm sure they grew closer together and stuff, but the book's not really about, about that. I would say, strictly speaking, the book is a how-to guide on discussing books with children. And they also, they do read like books that I would consider too old for kids. Like they read Animal Farm and they read other books that like I read in high school. So they are also looking to expand the minds of children. In the introduction and the conclusion, they talk about how they feel like kids' books have been dumbed down in recent years. And so that's why they use like classic books. And but so they're talking about how they think kids are more capable than parents and teachers and librarians give them credit for. So it's just a really interesting book. And I'm glad I finally got it off my TBR. But I wanted to mention that this was the third book on my TBR, and it had been on there since January 2014. And then I read the first book on my TBR, the number one book. This book has also been on there since January 2014, and I'm very, very excited that I finally got it read. And this is Lincoln's Battle with God, A President's Struggle with Faith and What It Meant for America by Stephen Mansfield. I actually heard about this one because I saw it at the Jimmy Carter Library in Atlanta. It was in their gift shop when I went to visit that library back in like 2012 or whenever that was. So this had been on my radar for a long time. This is, as you might guess from the title, a discussion of Lincoln's religious life throughout his life. I didn't really know this, but at the beginning of his life, Abraham Lincoln was a big atheist. He like did debates and he did, he wrote um, pamphlets and he gave lectures on how he felt like God was not a real being and he was an atheist. And then over time, he sort of gradually became a Christian. He, uh, Stephen Mansfield talks about how he, in this time, your family was very important and your lineage was very important. And Abraham Lincoln's mother was actually an illegitimate child. And so it, that affected Abraham Lincoln's um, self-worth and his view of himself. And he actually believed throughout his entire life that he had been cursed by God for some reason and 
They don't really know why, but they sort of suspect that it's because of this illegitimacy that he felt like was in his family heritage. And so, at the beginning of the book, at the beginning of his life, when he was a young man, he felt this curse very keenly, and because of that curse, he became an atheist. Although, it's kind of one of those things where, like, he believed in God, but he just hated God, so he said he was an atheist. So anyway, but then as he grew older, and especially as he became, when he was president during the Civil War, and when he was suffering loss in his life, he became very, a strong Christian. But even when he became a strong Christian, he never really, he never joined the church, and he was never a faithful churchgoer. So in a way, he was more um, about spirituality rather than actually going to church and, you know, organized religion. But this is a very interesting book. Um, I would say it's a little light on historical sources. A lot of his, um, his, um, conclusions come from, like, theorizing, and he doesn't really have proof, per se, of some of his conclusions. But on the whole, I found this really interesting. I've always been interested in people who have spiritual battles because I myself have struggled pretty much my whole life with, like, faith and God and God's existence and, you know, why bad things happen. And, the, and I've also been, really been um, interested in the concept of hell and, like, so anyway, this was right up my alley, and I also am really interested in American history. Although the Civil War hasn't, in particular, been particularly been like a strong interest of mine, I've always been more interested in um, the Revolutionary War period. But this was a good book, and I'm glad I finally read it. And now there's a new number one book on my TBR. And then finally, I read my Willa Cather for the month. I read A Lost Lady out of this collection of her pioneer, pioneer stories from the library. Uh, I did get through A Lost Lady a lot quicker than I got through um, one of ours last month, but I didn't find A Lost Lady to be particularly memorable. This is a novella about a young ma man named Neil who lives with his uncle in the small Nebraska town of Sweetwater, it's a fictional town, and he has a very high admiration for a neighbor of his named Mrs. Forrester, and she is a sort of like a city lady. She's from California, and she moves here because her husband is ill, and he needs rest and relaxation, and at the start of the book, they have this um, house that they always stay during the summer, but then their fortunes change and they start living their full time. So it's about Neil's perceptions of Mrs. Forrester. As I said, at the beginning of the book, he's really, oh my, he's basically in love with her. And then things happen and he discovers that Mrs. Forrester is not as ideal as he thinks she is. And it's sort of about his rejection of her and his how his um, standards for judging people change over time. So this was okay. Again, it was I didn't find it particularly memorable. I had to look up the characters' names before I started filming this video because I couldn't remember any of their names. This is a very short book, and yeah, I don't really recommend this. I don't think it's one of Willa Cather's great works, but um, I'm glad I read it. And yeah, I think next month I'm doing um, Death no, 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 not next month. Um, in August, I think I'm doing Death Comes for the Archbishop, which is like one of my favorite of her books. So I'm really excited about that. But anyway, this was okay. Nothing spectacular. Yeah, just average. Which, you know, a writer can't have all amazing books. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So, But anyway, so now I'm currently reading... Um, the Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Weir, which is a chunker, and I think it's going to take me the rest of the month. I've also read a few more books since I finished these, but I'm going to do those in another video. I also wanted to briefly mention that I've decided to change my reading plans for the year. At the start of the year, I had done, I had set up five categories for myself. I was going to read um, one Willa Cather book every month, um, the longest books, the 20 longest books on my TBR, the books that I've been on my TBR since 2014, um, the books that I have had on my reread list that I never get to, so some rereads, and then the last one, oh shoot, where is, ha, ah, rereads, Willa Cather, longest books on my TBR. Oh shoot, own books, my own books. Anyway, I'm going to read one of 
book. Oh, I've been told only going to read books in those five categories for the whole year. But I'm finding very, I'm finding it very constraining, and it's making reading less exciting for me. So I've decided that I'm only going to make myself read four books a month from each one of those categories, and then I'm going to do the rest of the books I can do fun books for the month. So that way, I'll still be making progress on my goals, but I'll also have a bit more leeway to read fun books, and that'll hopefully make reading more exciting for me again. So yeah, I'm looking forward to July when I'm going to start my new reading plan with some fun books and some goal books. But anyway, I hope everybody's having a great day and you're reading some great books and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!